Oh my God, you guys. Log off of AOL Instant Messenger, pause the Spice Girl CD, and pull up a beanbag chair because I want to gossip about cute boys. <laughs> You're listening to the Great Pop Culture Debate episode devoted to the best 90s teen heartthrobs. I'm your host, who could absolutely not pull off frosted tips, Eric Resniak. <laughs> and joining the party line today, we have former resident of Kentucky Hills 9021 Ho, Curtis Creekmore. Brenda Walsh is my bitch. Actual card carrying representative of the Leonardo DiCaprio fan club, Kara Austin. Not just a representative, I'm the president. And fifth coven member from the craft, Carissa Claus. You can't see my notes, but I'm dotting all of my eyes with hearts. Adorable, thank you all for joining me today. So first, let's go over how this works. We made a list of every notable teen heartthrob of the 1990s, from JTT to Jay Timberlake. We had more than 50 people take the survey to find their favorites, and the top 32 vote-getters were ranked by popularity, added to a bracket, and our panelists made their decisions. Now we argue about it and insult each other, all for your amusement. Want to follow along at home? You can find this bracket and all the others at Great Pop Culture Debate. Dot com. So before we jump into the debates, I will quickly go over the unanimous decisions we had in round one. Leonardo DiCaprio ended up being what was eating Ethan Embry. Chris O'Donnell batteranged Johnny Depp out of the competition. Brad Pitt knows what Freddie Prinz is doing this summer losing. John Stamos provided a full roundhouse to Brendan Fraser. Jonathan Taylor Thomas outtwinked Paul Walker. May he rest in peace. Oh. Ryan Phillippe proved too hot for 98 Degrees' as Nick Lachey. And Mark Paul Gosselaar Zach attacked James Marsden. The rest was a bigger mess than Kelly Taylor's love life, folks. <laughs> so we're going to jump into it with round one. Between Christian Slater and Joshua Jackson, Kara was the lone holdout in favor of Pacey. Explain your decision. Do I really need to explain myself that much? He's the only reason anyone really watched Dawson's Creek for boys because no one was lusting after James Vanderbeek. At the end. I was. I totally had a thing for the beak. <laughs> Me too. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to. Yes. Am, yeah. am I on? Am yes. on my timer now? Or oh no! I didn't. Go ahead. I, go ahead. I didn't good. know if I could go back and forth. But as you're going to find out going through this, I have a type and PC was my type. Um, I like a, a scoundrel with a heart of gold. I like a little bit of a bad boy, but who's also like going to be there in your time of need. And I mean, sleeping with the teacher, definitely a bit of a bad boy making some rough decisions. But, you know, he was the best boyfriend that Joey ever had. Joey and Dawson were just not meant to be together. That was a train wreck. And I got I got a, a soft spot for guys who like you know they need a little fix a little fixer upper They're, or they are a little bit of a fixer upper. He you know didn't have the best home life. He needed someone to kind of comfort him and be there for him. I wanted to be that person for for Pacey. Aww. And yeah, I guess of the of the boys on that show, he was the one I always gravitated to. All right, so Carissa, why did you pick Christian Slater? I mean, I, it's interesting because I think I also have a type and it is much like Kara's, but minus the heart of gold. It's just the bad boy. And Christian Slater was, so, I mean, Heather's was in 1989, so not quite the 90s, but it was most of our first glimpse of him, I think. And then his 90s movies are just amazing. He was in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Mm -hmm. Where, like, he has the amazing line, fuck me, it worked. <laughs> he was in <laughs> Interview with a Vampire and uh, Untamed Heart, where he's just, like, he plays to Marissa Tomei. And that's just, like, I loved that movie when I was, whatever, 14. And also, that hair. That hair. Yeah. That hair. I, that's going to be a refrain you'll hear from me a lot, but, like. <laughs> That hair. <laughs> he did have enviable floppy hair, which was the thing in the 90s. I agree with that. So we have to put it to a vote. We have three people. Is anyone going to change their vote to Can Pacey? Can I have a brief hair rebuttal? <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it. That Joshua Jackson was on board with popularizing the whole Caesar haircut thing. It was him and Clooney. It's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, he was on top of the hair game in the 90s. I can see that, but I still, I, I personally think that the floppy hair supersedes the Caesar cut, in my opinion, in terms of hot boys. That's just my Agreed. opinion. Pacey Agreed. looked like a pig. So. Oh, 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 
shade button, shade button. <laughs> there you go. Um, so unfortunately, I think Pacey has uh, been let down to the creek, Kara. But I will say this for fans of Joshua Jackson. If you've not watched Little Fires Everywhere on Hulu, he is on the show. He is giving us full dad bod realness now. And there is a scene in which he's in his tidy whiteies. And that is a meaty tuck. Let me tell you, ladies. So. <laughs> Sometimes just long, but longevity. All right. Exactly. Um, and I, like it is a, it's an excellent show, by the way. So highly recommended. Uh, moving on in the sadly departed Bohunk category, I went with Luke Perry over Heath Ledger. Curtis, do you want to defend Heath? No. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I, like y'all are going to have to help me out on this one because I didn't actually watch 10 Things I Hate About You as a kid. What? I could not tell. Okay, remember. I was four in 1990. I don't oh, remember when that came out. I think it was like a little bit later. But like, I, I didn't watch that. I could not tell you any of the other movies that Heath Ledger is actually featured in in the 90s. Night's Tale. I would say, can I jump in and then you take one of mine later on that I don't want to defend? I mean, can we make that <laughs> trade? Is that okay? Yes, because for it. Okay, let me, before before she starts, I'm switching over. I am voting for other man who died. What's it? <laughs> Luke Perry, TV's Luke Perry. Infamous <laughs> other man who died. <laughs> Sideshow Luke Perry. Oh, <laughs> Kara, go ahead. Heath Ledger is smoking hot. Again, my type is in 10 Things I Hate About You. He is a, a or at least a rumored to be a bad boy with the heart of gold. Um, he, you know, and he, it could tie in later to Joseph Gordon-Levitt in that movie too. But I mean, one, he's got that accent. And that Luke Perry doesn't have that. Um, he had the hair. It was kind of like you could, it was a little bit curly and long enough that you could kind of like run your fingers through it. Um, Did you think about this at any time in the 1990s, Kara? <laughs> but it is especially in 10 Things I Hate About You, he does the grand gesture on the stairs. And then at the end, when he has to kind of prove himself that he's not a dirt bag and he wasn't, she wasn't just a bet. He comes through. Which is like every 90s guy plot line ever. I'm right. not a dirtbag, and I'm you weren't a just a bag. <laughs> Don't watch the rest of the movie before this where I completely was a dirtbag, but <laughs> I finally discovered that I can be a human being capable of emotions. Accept me and love me. Luke Perry, let's say Luke Perry just never did it for me. He's a little too Ken doll. I didn't like it. A Ken doll? No, no, like ma'am. <laughs> He was the bad boy on Nine or Two and All. And like, here's the thing: I that show. Oh, Ooh, Buffy. Okay. He was also in Buffy. He was also in the Buffy movie. Correct. He was the the love interest in the original Buffy movie. Was he a forty year old high schooler there too? Probably. I mean, he was a high schooler. They were yeah. all forty year old high schoolers. It was the nineties. <laughs> exactly. Everybody was getting their GEDs. But uh, um, Luke Perry, I, I don't disagree with anything you said about Heath Ledger. He was kind of great. Is that Rogan? He was really good in Night's Tale, which I actually don't think gets enough credit. He's but adorable in Night's Tale. Totally. But like Luke Perry was nineties teen heartthrobs, and it was shocking to me that he got so few votes because, uh, I mean. Dylan was the boy that women and I'm going to say women in the mid nineties wanted to lose their virginity to because he was just enough of a rebel that he was kind of dangerous and he wouldn't be boring in the sack, but he wasn't like Brandon, right? Like vanilla unflavored ice milk, Brandon. So <laughs> I agree with you that Luke Perry was way too old to be playing that role, but he pulled it off and he had a charisma. Like he was making those charisma checks in D and D left and right. And, um, it's it's sad to me that uh, he's not getting more credit, but I'm greatly outnumbered unless anyone wants to switch their vote to Luke Perry. I have switched over my dead body. <laughs> uh, Carissa, right. any ch- anything to weigh in on here? I originally had Heath Ledger, but I'm willing to switch <gasps> because I did uh, up until really recently. Um, I also watched Riverdale, and he's like. He aged really well. He Absolutely. like I bet you Heath Ledger would have too. <laughs> I know that's an unfair comparison for me to make. It's true. <laughs> but I but I forgot about Buffy the movie and like the leather jacket and the leather yeah. jacket. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm it's I'm true. gonna change you can you can put me down for Luke. The Perry only here. good modern yes. Joker. What a uh, what dream, a twist. Dream. He is the only good modern Joker. I agree with that. However, that was in the two thousands. So it is 
Overruled. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, in the floppy haired dreamboat land, Kara was the lone proponent of Keanu Reeves over Jared Leto. And I know this is going to get nasty. So Kara, go mm. for it. It's not going to get nasty. I just have such a bad reaction to Jared Leto. I don't like him at all. And so this isn't even the worst one where I was like, oh, I just voted for the other person and now I have to pay for it. But Keanu Reeves, I have a soft spot for, and I think maybe it's more 80s, like Bill and Ted. Mm -hmm. But it's like he reminded me of every, like your your babysitter's boyfriend. That's who Keanu Reeves is in my brain. Like, he's a guy, he's fine, but your dad doesn't want him coming around the house when you're not there. <laughs> yeah. It, it, like, to me, he's always, like, the black lab of, of human yeah. beings. Like, he's just there, and he's he's just happy to be there. He's happy to be there. But, you know, if you're not watching him, he may start humping somebody. Like, you know. Absolutely. Like, knock That's it exactly off. who Keanu Reeves is. Yes. I agree and, with you. And I know we're only judging in the 90s, but my man has aged well. Well. Absolutely. Very I think- well. He's, I think he's aged better than Jared Leto, who has been like the fighting the hot champion of the last two decades. Absolutely. He's a meme. He's a Matrix hero, whatever that is. Um, he's Canadian. <laughs> so that already ups his, his value in my book. Carissa, I can almost hear you jumping through the microphone. <laughs> I know. I vehemently disagree. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think Jared Leto has aged amazingly. Like, okay, he had the hair then and he has the hair now. Like, the hair is amazing. The hair is amazing. And there are those eyes, those blue, blue eyes. I just, I mean, I was 15 when My So Called Life came out, which is the exact same age of Angela Chase. Yes. And like, I don't know. That, that show reflected what I wished my teen experience had been. I guess, um, because stuff actually happened <laughs> to her. But I, like, he is forever imprinted in me because of how closely I watched and kind of uh, internalized that show. I, I hear you. And uh, I also voted for Jared. And, and we are three to one for Jared on this one. I will also say, I don't know if the Alexander the Great film he was in was 90s or early 2000s. Does anybody know? I don't know, but he's the worst modern joker. I'm just putting that out there. Uh, No disagreements on that one either. Um, That was a mess. But like he's, uh, he's, I frankly segued very well from TV star to movie star. Uh, We won't talk about the rock stuff. But I I agree that uh, Jared is, to me, ultimately the more heartthrob. But I think Keanu is a national treasure. So that is no disrespect to Mr. Reeves. Uh, Anyone going to change their vote? Are we still three to one in favor of uh, Jared? I vote present, so it's fine. Okay, I'm I'm, I'm fine changing because like I didn't have I really didn't have a dog in this fight. I just don't care for Jared Leto, so I'm not. I like Keanu Reeves fine, but no love lost. Gotcha. Whoa, Joey Lawrence had three quarters of the votes over Mark Wahlberg. Only Carissa went with Marky Mark and his funky <laughs> bunch. Why? Um. So this comes back to what we were discussing in our warm up and the lack of new kids on the block on this ballot. Um. Because my favorite new kid was the bad boy Donnie Wahlberg, and I think that's exactly why I picked Marky Mark because it was like as close as I could get to the transitive property. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, he was he was too young for me in the nineties ish. It seemed because he, he was such a baby. Marky Mark was compared to Donnie. And so I remembered being like, oh, cute. He's the little brother of this, you know, man that I'm clearly in love with and going to marry. So, <laughs> it was, yeah. So I, this was fully a nostalgia pick for me. Confession. I was not aware that Mark was the younger brother. I always Ooh. thought he was the older one. Because <laughs> when Marky Mark came out on the scene, he was fucking ripped. Do you oh, remember that Good ripped. Vibrations video? Yeah, he was also like 16 or something. Well, now I think I'm probably going to jail because <laughs> <laughs> he was having numerous impure thoughts watching that video. Um, but yeah, there you go. I, I uh, Kara, why Joey Lawrence? Um, I would like to turn this one over to Curtis. That is unfair. I call it <laughs> shade. <laughs> no, no. You also I voted refuse. for him. I refuse to take this one. I can't. No, <laughs> Calvin Klein underwear campaign is all I got to say. Marky Mark and those Calvin Kleins is everything. Like, did he not win? How, have, how did he not win? 
I can't Killian out of four Lawrence of us. Just quintessential teen heartthrob. Like he just is. I like, think about that category. Like he's one of the ones that comes up. And I feel like that was like when people started talking about heartthrob and teen beat in the nineties. It was always Joey Lawrence. That's how he was introduced when he came out on like the Tonight Show and stuff. And he had the hair. He had the hair. like key nineties floppy hair, and it was part of his tagline. You whoa. can't just say whoa. You have to do your hair at the same time. Yep, it's true. It's true. And I will say, like, that's really all he was bringing to the table because now, sorry, Joey Lawrence, if you're listening, now that he's gone bald, which I respect the decision to shave it off if it's not working out for you, but it's just not working. It's just no. not. And so I think it looks that, like a testicle. I, I was going to say reptile, but sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> And I'm sorry, we're being terribly mean right now. Joey Lawrence, we respect you. We respect your craft. We respect you for putting up with Melissa Joan Hart for several seasons on your, your sitcom. You leave Clarissa alone. <laughs> um, but uh, I personally, if I had to choose right now, I would switch to Mark Wahlberg. I would. So would I. I loved Mrs. Doubtfire. And I think that was the one reason that I chose Joey Lawrence. But I am absolutely willing to swap over to the other side. Is anyone going to be? So right now, I think we're three for Mark, right? Yeah. Is I'm anyone all alone? I'm all alone. This whole sorry. Uh, so sorry. We're... I won't we're switch, switch, but I will lose gracefully. <laughs> That's all I ask. That's all I ask. In Jocks versus Geeks, we have Mario Lopez getting three quarters of the votes over Joseph Gordon Levitt. Kara, out there on your limb, let's go ahead. So <laughs> let's go even further. This isn't just... going to be a, a to convince you that Joseph Gordon Levitt is better, but God, Slater's gross. Okay, mm. like I feel like. Um, here's the thing. Both Zach and Slater in modern sensibilities are terrible people. Sure. Just truly awful. But Mario Love has never did it for me. Like, I never liked Slater as a character. And I don't know. He just, he seemed like someone who was going to beat me up or call me a name. So I just, Joseph Gordon-Levitt wouldn't do <sighs> either of those things. He was a grown-up in a little boy, in a, not a little boy, but a teenager's body in a third rock from the sun. Mm -hmm. And he's one of the other leads in 10 Things I Hate About You. And it, again, it kind of a, you know, like he's got some bad or misguided intentions in the beginnings, but ends up not being a total slime ball. He had the longer hair too. And I don't usually go for long hair guys, but he made it work. I'll tell you, you are you are swaying me here because I do agree. Listen, I liked looking at Mario Lopez on Saved by the Bell. I enjoyed the fact that he wore short shorts, yep. that he wore sleeveless t-shirts. But he was going to pull your underwear up, not in the fun way, and then shove you in the locker. <laughs> Listen, Kara, that would still do it for me. I'm not going right. to lie to you. Right. Like, uh, yeah, like uh, I describe my type in my early 20s as the type of guy who would rather kill me as much as look at me. And so <laughs> he's playing into that. But um, I'm... I do agree with you that in terms of like heart throbs, Mario certainly got some play, but I, I, Joseph Gordon let it was all over Teen Beat, and I don't remember yep. Mario being as present there. I don't think any of the the um, at least when I was getting the magazines, I don't think any of the Saved by the Bell guys were. Like maybe that that was over by the time I was into Teen Beat, but maybe mm. I certainly remember seeing Mark Paul Gosseler on there, but. We'll go. Does anyone want to? So if I'm switching my vote to Joseph Gordon, we're now fifty fifty. Does anybody want to stick? adhere to mario lopez i do just because i yeah i think joseph Gordon Le like i i hear what you're saying and he yeah he's a cutie pie he's just like too innocent you know he's he's like too much of a boy to like be a heartthrob for me he's Chris like a man yeah he's like your <laughs> friend's little brother who's like cute to hang around and like oh let's go to his school play you know but like yeah he's yeah Give me Mario Lopez and preferably without his shirt on. Okay. And now you're swaying me back to Mario. And <laughs> I was like, the only thing I could say would I know would absolutely sway you back to Mario. I was like, he's like a nineties guest on, but I was like, there goes Eric. Yep. <laughs> right Mario Lopez. You're back on team Mario for sure. <laughs> and I also just realized that Joseph Gordon Liddit is kind of like the distillation of the friend zone. Like that's what I think yes. about with him. Mm. Yeah. He's a walking friend zone. So yes. I think we are on team Mario, correct? We're moving him forward. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, Kara. It's so lonely over here. It's a good thing I have a drink. <laughs> well, I'm about to join you in Lonely Land because Devin Sawa got 75% of the votes over Justin Timberlake. I was the lone JT holdout. Ugh. Curtis, I'm going to first ex ask you to explain why you went with number one seed, surprising, Devin Sawa. I think I only need to say four words to justify my choice here. Can I keep you? Yay! 
in the 90s, I was a tween. Devin Sawa was one of my first crushes. He was a household name. Everybody knew who he was. He got his start in Little Giants as the dreamy little quarterback that everybody wanted to take to the middle school dance. And then somehow was able to cement heart heart throb status by being in a movie where he was only featured in a body for five minutes. He was only an actual human being as Devin Sawa for five minutes in Casper, which is amazing. Oh, he was just everything that I wanted. He had that mushroom cut, like talking about hair. That's where it started. <laughs> like Devin Sawa was the mushroom cut heartthrob. And there is a reason that he is a number one seed in this bracket because so many people remember him for like that, that mushroom hair and that gap tooth. I, I Can I tell you one thing about the Casper movie though? Yes. He doesn't do the voice of the ghost for the rest of the movie. It's a different voice actor. So he's only, Devin Sawa is only in Casper for just that like five minutes. He owes his entire fame to whoever did that voice. Just oh, absolutely. I'm with you 100%. I will say, speaking on behalf of Justin Timberlake, I don't understand Devin Sawa. Like, I understand that he exists. I don't get it. it to me, he's like <laughs> forgettable twink number four. So I just, beautiful. It, it is nothing for me. And I recognize I'm in the minority here and I will lose gracefully, as you so cheerfully coined <laughs> that phrase. In defense of Mr. Timberlake, he obviously became a huge superstar in the early 2000s and was... I think a defining heartthrob for that generation. But even in the late nineties, when NSYNC's first got started, the girls were crushing hardcore. Like, yeah, there was also the JC fan girls, which PS, if you want a good time, go back and look at JC Chazé's uh, facial hair stylings in the early two thousands. That <laughs> is a roller coaster. It is amazing. <laughs> that will get you through the quarantine right there. Um, but like, did Timberlake do anything for me personally? No, he didn't. Like again, like the ramen hair or whatever, too twinky for me. But I was like, Devin Sawa, really? So I will lose. I'm fine with that. We will advance Devin and move on to the next matchup uh, between modern day beefcakes. We have David Boreanaz versus Matt Damon. I went with Angel, uh, but Carissa, why did you pick Matt? Um, because of basically three words: goodwill hunting. Um, that was 1997, but he was just, he wrote it and he was in it. And do you remember how much he and Ben Affleck were just like the golden boys of the moment when that happened? And even before that school ties, you, you must have seen school ties. I think I did a really long time ago. Really? The like boys at a private school, Brendan Fraser's in it. Uh, yeah, I, I'm almost positive I did. I'm weirdly confusing it in my head with Red Dawn. Yeah, it checks a few of your boxes. You may want to uh, sure. uh, re readdress <laughs> that. Um, but he was in that, and then in um, then he was also in The Rainmaker. And like all of those, he's just like, the smile is so sweet and so pure. Pure like Joseph Gordon-Levitt, but older. So you like, it's not the cute younger brother. He's like actually dateable, I think. And and I agree with all of the above, and I'm not going to be mad for Mr. Damon advancing. He's super cute in there. For me, I went with David Boreanaz because, like, Angel, man. Like, remember in season two of Buffy when he's been – or is it season three? He's been killed by Buffy and sent to hell, and he's, like, chained up and being shirtless. Does anybody remember this? Yes. No. no. Yes. There were, like – so many kinks that were created just from <laughs> that like three episode arc. And I just thought he was hot as hell. He was a cautionary tale because it's like, Oh, Hey, don't fuck that rando you just met because he might actually be evil and um, he'll kill you. So I thought he was great. And he was very good in that character with very little experience. So I'm fine deferring to Matt Damon, but I wanted to speak on behalf of Derry Bo David Boreanaz. David, call me. <laughs> Ricky Martin's bracket run was cut short when he met Ryder Strong, who got three out of four of the votes. I was team Shebangs. Kara, why team Ryder Strong? Scoundrel with a heart of gold every time, <laughs> all day long. <laughs> Boy Meets World was just a vehicle for more Ryder Strong. I mean, one, look at that name. If you could like that's the name out of a fantasy novel. He's Porn. a hero who saves the day. Porn. That's also Porn. a fantasy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he was just Sean was the only reason to watch that show. 
he was far more interesting than Corey. He had the best lines. He's, you know, the, he's kind of a smart ass. And again, and he, I'm not sure if I'm remembering it right, but I'm pretty sure he had like a bad home life too. So again, it's someone I kind of want to fix. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want to be there for them. But he had the, you know, the nineties hair. Um, and I think at that point, like when I was watching that show, like I was the same age as, as, as uh, Corey and Sean. So it was just like, that's, I wish he was my neighbor and best friend who I could kind of openly crush on. And then we date and live happily ever after. Wow. And he was, he was available. Cause you know, the whole love story was between Topanga and Corey. So he was just like, Sean was there and ready. He was a third wheel. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. America's. And I was already wheel. like, you know what? I'll <laughs> jump in there and then the car can drive smoothly. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Um, I'll speak on behalf of Ricky Martin. It's self-explanatory. Uh, if you remember when he kind of became a thing in America with his cup of life performance, I think it was on the Grammys. He was a modern Elvis. He was hmm. like that pelvis was just everywhere. And you were dazzled. Like Madonna was in love with him. Everybody was in love with him. And like we kind of all knew that he was gay, but no one was saying it at the time. But that just made me love him more. I I thought like late 90s Ricky Martin is pinnacle hotness Ricky Martin. He's still looking great. Don't get me wrong. He looked very good on uh, the American crime story Versace season. Mm -hmm. Can act his way out of a paper bag, but that's not why you hire him. (laughs) But it's uh, that's why I was going with Ricky. Fine, passing it along, giving it to Ryder Strong, who was the more thoughtful teen heartthrob. I agree with that. However, don't forget that Ricky had his menudo days that probably went into the 80s. But he was, as a child singer, extremely popular, too. He was renowned before he ever became a, a solo artist. So Ryder advances, finally, Forever ages Paul Rudd got three quarters of the votes over prematurely aged Josh Hartnett. Kara, you picked Ratface. I mean, Josh. I have no, I, I think I picked him by, by mistake because <laughs> <laughs> that one came up in my defense. And I was like, first off, I was like, who? And I was like, why? <laughs> because I had like, what was he? I was like, what was he in? Like, I remember him. I remember him from like the Tiger Beat pages. I definitely pulled his poster out. But I, when I looked at his like IMDb, IMDb profile, I was like, I never watched a single of the one movie he's really in in the 90s, which was Pearl Harbor. <laughs> and the faculty was that not 90s oh that's right the faculty yeah i didn't watch that one either but yeah i, I don't i think i misclicked so um <laughs> godspeed josh hartnett you've got beautiful brown hair and you're good you're nice enough to look at but holy like i i, I don't i must have been on drugs i don't know why i would not pick paul rudd because clueless um my i'm the vice, I'm the vice president of the paul rudd fan club <laughs> exactly like <laughs> clueless that's all i have to say about paul rudd anything anything has he been in a bad mood? Like, or he's been in bad movies. Has he looked poorly in a movie? He, he looks the exact impossible. same. Yeah. yeah. 30 years yeah. later. And even if it's a bad movie, he's still a delight. Like, literally, Paul Rudd is always a delight. So, God bless. I absolutely watch movies I otherwise would not have interest in because Paul Rudd's in it. 100. 100. And I could literally go on for five minutes about how much I dislike Josh Hartnett and I don't understand why people were pushing him as hard as they were in the 90s because literally someone was trying so hard to make Josh Hartnett happen. It w- and he was everywhere. But I'm not going to do that because I'm a better person and I wish him nothing but success. <laughs> so there you have it, ladies and gays, our sweet 16 90s teenage heartthrobs. Did your favorites make the bowl cut or were they brutally dumped by our panelists? We know you've got opinions, so head over to greatpopculturedebate.com to leave a note or send us a burn book via social media. Check back later this week for part two, where the boys get more crushable until we name the best 90s teen heartthrobs.